In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use Blender to make text that looks like ice. I'll be using Blender version 2.64. We're going to be using the Cycles Render Engine for this video, so you need to make sure that you have it. So come over to this drop-down menu and make sure that one of the selections is Cycles Render. If you don't have it, then you can go to blender.org to download the latest version of Blender. Let's start by creating a new project. So go to the File menu and select New and then click on Reload Startup File. This is the default scene with a single cube object. We're not going to use this cube, so delete it by first right-clicking on it to make sure that it's selected and then press the X key on your keyboard and select Delete. Now let's add some text. So from the Add menu, select Text. Now zoom in to get a closer look by using the scroll wheel on your mouse. You'll notice that the text is lying down flat, but we want it to be standing up, so we need to rotate it. To do that, press the R key on your keyboard. You'll notice that the text now rotates when you move your mouse. We want to restrict the rotation to the X axis, so just press the X key on your keyboard. Now when you move your mouse, the text only rotates on the X axis. The amount of rotation can be set using the mouse, or you can enter a number in directly. I know that I want to rotate the text by 90 degrees, so I'm going to type 90 and then press the Enter key. Now let's change the text, and to do that we need to be in Edit Mode. If you look down here, you can see that we're currently in Object Mode. So click on this and select Edit Mode. We now have a cursor at the end of the text, so press your Backspace key multiple times to delete it. Now you can type your text. I'm typing a space between each letter so that the letters will be spaced farther apart. We're done with edit mode now, so we can switch back to object mode by clicking here and then select object mode. Now let's add some depth to the text. Come over here and click on F. Down here in the geometry section, click on extrude and type 0.1 and then press the enter key. You can see how it added depth to the text. Now let's make the text thicker and round out the edges. So here under Bevel, click on Depth and type 0.05 and then press the Enter key. You can rotate the view to see this a little better. To do that, press and hold the middle mouse button and then drag the mouse. You can also pan the view by holding the Shift key while you press the middle mouse button and drag the mouse. Now that we have beveled the edges, we can smooth them out using the resolution setting. So click on Resolution and then type 7 and press the Enter key. This does a good job of smoothing out the bevels. We're done with the text now, so let's add a surface for the text to sit on. Go to the Add menu and select Mesh and then Plane. We need to scale this plane up in size, so press the S key on your keyboard. You can scale it by moving the mouse, or you can enter a number in directly. I want to scale it to five times its original size, so I'm going to type 5 and then press the Enter key. You can use this blue arrow to move the plane up and down. Just grab it with the mouse and drag it. We want to position the plane right below the text, so let's change the view to make this easier to do. To switch to front view, go to the View menu and select Front. You'll notice here that there's also a convenient shortcut for switching to the front view. Instead of using this menu, we could have just pressed the number one key on the number pad. In Blender, there's a difference between the number keys above the letters on the keyboard and the number keys on the right side number pad. To change the view, you need to use the numbers on the number pad. The numbers above the letters on the keyboard will not work. If you have a number pad, then I would recommend learning these shortcuts because they can save you a lot of time. This is the front view. We're currently viewing the scene in perspective mode, so let's change it to orthographic mode. So go to the View menu and select View Perspective Orthographic. Notice that we could have also just pressed the number 5 key on the number pad. In this view, we can now easily move the plane below the text. Just grab this blue arrow with the mouse and drag it into place. 
Now the way that we're going to make this text look like ice is to turn the text into a fluid and then run a fluid simulation. We'll let the fluid fall a little bit which will make the ice look slightly melted. Now since we're using a fluid, we need to create a container that will contain the fluid. To do that, we'll add a cube. So go to the Add menu and select Mesh and then Cube. Let's switch to wireframe so that the cube doesn't block our view of the text. So click right here and select wireframe. Now grab the red arrow and drag it to center the cube over the text. Let's scale the size of the cube up a little, so press the S key on the keyboard. Then type 1.2 and press the Enter key. This will scale up the cube by 20%. Now grab the blue arrow and position the bottom of the cube just under the plane below the text. Now let's pan the view down a little. So hold the shift key, press the middle mouse button, and then drag the scene down. Now we're going to add a light source. So click the left mouse button right above the cube to set an origin point. Then go to the Add menu and select Mesh and then Plane. Now if you hold the middle mouse button, you can move the mouse and rotate the view. Make sure that the text is inside the cube and that the plane that we just added is centered over the top of the cube. Now with this plane still selected, we're going to set the material for it. So click on the material button right here. Then make sure that cycles render is selected. You can find it in the drop down menu right here. Now click on the new button. The surface section here is where we select the surface type. Click right here to open the list of shaders and then select Emission. This will allow our plane to emit light. The strength value here sets the amount of light that will be emitted. Set this value to 20. Now right click on the bottom plane to select it and we'll set its material. So click on the New button. Here we'll just use all of the default values so the surface material will be diffuse. When we render the final image, we'll see the text and this plane that it is sitting on. We'll also be able to see the background. By default, the background color is gray. We can change that by clicking on the World button. Then come down here and click on the Color button. Move this slider up into the middle area and then select a blue color. Now right click on the text to select it. I mentioned earlier that we are going to be turning the text into a fluid, but before we can do that, we need to convert it into a mesh. So with the text selected, press Alt-C, then click on the bottom section that starts out with Mesh From. Now come over to the right and select the Physics tab. Then click the Fluid button. Then click here to set the Fluid type and select Fluid. Next, right click on the cube to select it. This cube is the container for the fluid. Over here on the right under the Physics tab, click the Fluid button. For the type, select Domain. Here we have some options that we can change. Start by changing the resolution to 100. Increasing this value improves the resolution, but it also increases the required memory and simulation time. You can see the required memory displayed right here. We can also change the start and end times for the simulation. These values are in seconds. We are going to be doing a short simulation, so leave the start time at zero and change the end time to 0 0.1. Down here below the timeline, is where we set the start and end frames. We don't need very many frames, so set the end frames to 20. Now we're ready to run the simulation, so click on the Bake button. This will take a few seconds to run. When it's finished, you can move this green marker to view the simulation results. You'll notice that the text fluid is falling as you move through the frames. What you will want to do is to find a frame where the fluid has fallen some, but at the same time the text is still readable. I think I'll use this frame right here. You can see the frame number displayed down here. 
Now right click on the text. This will highlight the original text that we created. We don't want this text to be displayed when we render our final image. We only want the fluid text to be displayed. So to turn this text off, come up here and scroll through the list of objects until you find text. Then click on the camera button. This will prevent the text from being displayed in the final image. Also click on the I button to prevent it from being displayed in our current view. Now we can set the material for the fluid text. So right click on the fluid to select it. Then click on the material button. And then click on new. For the surface value, select glass. This will give the text a transparent look. Now we're ready to set up the camera view. So start by going back to our front view. We do this by going to the view menu and then select front. Then hold down the shift key, press the middle mouse button and pan the view to bring the text to the center. While we're here, we can also reposition the bottom plane if needed. Just right click on the plane and then drag the blue arrow until the plane is right below the text. Leave a small space between the plane and the text. Now, go to the view menu and select Align View and then Align Active Camera to View. This will move the camera to the current view. This lightened area is what the camera sees. You can use the scroll wheel to zoom this view. Now go to the view menu and select Properties. Click the checkbox next to Lock Camera to View. This will allow us to navigate while in camera view. We can turn this menu off by going back to the view menu and select properties again. Now I can rotate the view while holding the middle mouse button. And I can pan the view while holding the shift button and the middle mouse button. You may want to go back and forth a couple of times to get the view that you want. You can also use the scroll wheel to zoom. You can toggle between the camera view and our previous view by going to the view menu and selecting camera. If we rotate the view, we can see the position of the camera. To get back into camera view, go to the view menu again and select camera. Now that the camera view is set up, we are ready to render the image. So come over here and click the render button that looks like a camera. For now, keep all of the default values and just press the render button. This isn't rendered with very many samples, so it will look a little grainy, but it's a quick way to make sure that everything is okay before rendering the final image. Now you might notice here, if you look close, that there are some straight edges in the rendered image. You can smooth out these edges if you want. I like the straight edges because I think that they look kind of like ice crystals. But I'll show you how to smooth them out in case you would rather not have them. So press the escape key to go back to our previous view. Right click on the text to select it. Then over here on the left, click on the smooth button. Then click on the render button again. You can see now that all of our straight edges have been smoothed out. Since I like the straight edges, I'm going to put them back in. So I press Escape to go back to the other view, and then click on Flat. Now I'm ready to render the final image with more samples. So come down here and open the section called Sampling. In some older versions of Blender, this section may be called Integrator. Now down here under Samples, you'll see a value for Render. It's currently set to 10. Change this value to 500. The larger this number is, the better the final image will look, but the longer it will take to render. Now go back up to the top and click on the Render button again. If for some reason you want to abort the rendering before it is finished, then just press the Escape key. Well, this is going to take a while to render, so I'm going to pause the video until it's done. The image is finished rendering. To save the final image, put your cursor over the image and press the F3 key. You can specify a directory here and a file name here. I'll call this ice.png. 
Then press the Save As Image button. If you want to save your image as a different image type, then go to the Output section and click this button to select the image type. Then put your cursor over the image and press F3 to open the Save Image window again. As a final step, we should save our project. To do that, go to the File menu and select Save As. You can specify a directory here and a file name here. I'll call this ice.blend. Blend is the extension name for Blender projects. Then press the Save As Blender File button. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.